الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. All right, so we're going to pick up where we left off here. And we left off talking about the beginning of um, jihad. I gave a, a brief introduction to um, Kitab al-Jihad. And like for for the sake of like these classes, uh, I'll stick with mostly what is inside of the, the matin itself and not go too far out without, uh, without pointing to what's like necessary for us to know. Um, so the author here, he starts off with Kitab al-Jihad. And of course, like the amount of things that make it obligatory after ijma'. Um, like it would be fard kifaya for the jihad uh, talib is fard kifaya, and normally this would be like what is the like fard kifaya? Of course, someone has to stand up with this uh, wajib, this wajib, and when is the time that this would be done? And the the fard kifaya, which um, the people have talked about, every year there needs to be some type of jihad that goes on for like um, sending out. Uh, to, to fulfill the Fard Kifaya, there needs to be every single year, it needs to be a group of people that go out in there and do jihad. Um, and this is um, to accomplish the Fard Kifaya. Now, of course, in taking into consideration like this this day and age, there's a lot of um, issues that have to be like addressed. Like if we're going at it uh, without like, if we're going to be causing more problems than we actually um, are supposed to be doing, uh, like this is going to be, uh, this would be bad. But in general, normally the, the scholars they talk about every single year, there would be a group that would go out there to fulfill the Fard al-Kifaya. Sometimes they would do it more than once in a year, but the very least is each each year. They would send out, um, there would be um, Fard al um, the Jihad al-Talab, which is going out. And he's going to talk about, uh, in this, he's going to talk about Jihad al-Talab. There's also Jihad al dafa which I mentioned before, which is like preventative um, Jihad. Um, and this is Fard Ain. This is on every single individual, male, female, um, all of all of the whether or not they are a slave or not a slave. Everyone is uh, uh, obligated for um, um, the the Fard um, the jihad al defa. And for someone who is within the Masafat al Qasr, like the the like within a 50 mile radius, like anyone within a 50 mile radius of that place that the Kufar came into their land and whatnot. They're also obliged to go to war with the Kufar to defend them until they have given them enough for Kifaya. Like until they've given them enough um, support that they can rid the, the Kufar from that. And if not, then it keeps spreading. That circle keeps spreading until there's enough, uh, until the, there is enough power to um, remove the Kufar from that land. And of course, like technically, like the, uh, like Egypt would be the first one to come into the war with um, Israel. And of course, there's all kinds of issues here. Um, but this would because they're close like to Gaza, like um they're just right across the border and whatnot. And so like this is this is a, an Islamic um duty, you know, to go fight. Um but of course we are Mukrahun. So the um <clears throat> the the first thing that um he goes into, he's gonna talk about um wujub, uh, the conditions for jihad and talab to be obligatory. And this is talab, not the jihad al defa, but this is the jihad al talab. Um, so he mentions here, وَشَرَائِتُ وُجُوبِ الْجِهَادِ uh, So he says the conditions for jihad to be obligatory, to seven of these. Um, and this is for jihad al-talab. He mentions the first one, al-Islam. So of course, like if you have a dhimmi inside of the, the Muslim country, the, the dhimmi is not obligated to do anything. He's, he's actually like paying for his, um, he's paying for his protection with his jizya. With the jizya, and we'll talk about this, this comes a little later. But the jizya is basically him paying for his protection. He's not expected to do anything with the jihad. He can um, leave it for, uh, like he leaves it to the Muslims to, to, to fight and to defend the land for him. So this is the first one, uh, the is, uh, Islam. This is the first condition for jihad al-talab. And the, the next one is wal And this also is like that the, the person comes of age that they have actually reached bulu. Um and of course, this comes. Uh, there's this hadith that comes that talks about this, uh, where one of the Sahabis came up to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he sent him back because he was too young. Then he came to him when he was 15, and he allowed him to go to war. Um, and so this this shows that like, we we take a couple of things from that. One is that like the person before they come of age, they're not um, they're not obliged to go to war, and actually they're not supposed to get involved, um, and like uh, with because of their safety and whatnot. And then once they turn 15, then they're also, they're of age. Um, they have reached that age, and then they would be, um, and they would be of the people that, 
uh, would fall into that would you and of course the the would you comes if someone like I'm the an individual person the would you would come if the imam asked for these people he called them to war and he said you guys are coming with us to war and then of course the people that are um, then uh, requested by the imam to go then they have to go but other than that it would be like uh, would you build a kifaya or the kifaya um, so if some of the people did it then that um, then that accounts for the rest um, and then the, so the, the second one was Bulu. The third one is Aqal. So the person has to, of course, he needs to be sane. Um, these are like, these are the Shuruta and Taklif here. Like these next two are the Shuruta Taklif. Also Hurriya, that the person is not a slave. Um, and this also goes because the slave is, uh, he is property. And also the slave can't be, he can't be like if his master told him, go out to war. This is not, this is not the, the master has no right to tell him to put his life on the line. Like, uh, in general, like the master has no right to tell him to do something dangerous. You know, like this is this is not the, the master's right over him. Like his right is for him to treat him well and properly and to, and to care for him and, and, uh, and be kind to him. And uh, also make like if there is anything that he has that he tells him to do, it can't be over what he can bear. So um, like the Hodriya is one of the conditions for someone to have to go out to war. Um, and also he says here with Dukuriya. And also, this is the that the fact that this is a man and not a woman. So, of course, like women are not called out to go to war. And of course, you know, when the, the women um, talk about women's rights all the time and they think everything should be evil or, or equal, which is evil, um, they um, and they don't realize like you know, Islam. We have we have the men are the ones that are that are called out to go to war and to protect the land, and the women are not. So you know, of course, there's differences, and this is one of them. Uh, and he says also here was sihha. And sihha is that this person is um, this person is able to um, actually go to war. And he doesn't have something such as like if he's lame, he can't walk. You know, like he can't walk, or he has like some severe disability and whatnot. And in this case, because of the severe disability, he would not be held liable to do, or he would not be called to do that thing that um, he would be prevented to do because of his disability. Uh, one of the things like uh, in this day and age, there is modern warfare that much of the warfare can actually be done with drones and all kinds of other things that someone who is disabled, completely disabled, like um, like say he he can he can he can move a controller and he knows how to think and do it and do like uh, a controller work with a drone or something. In this case, the the, oblig the obligation would still be upon him. The obligation would be upon him because this this disability, say he's um, say he's like um, he, his his legs don't work. Yes, he his legs don't work, but his hands work, and he can fight with us. And so, because of this, he it, that doesn't drop from him. It, it would only drop if he was called to do something that he was unable to do. In this case, that obligatory that obligation would drop. But if he was called to do something that he could do, and maybe it's computer warfare, and this is also another. Um, this is also something that uh, is very important, actually, in this day and age, that we have many more people that get into programming and um, computer cyber warfare because this is a this is a, a area that must be uh, like it's a it's a battlefront that must be carried you know like uh, we can't we can't let the the muslims um, go on without having a battlefront of cyber warfare um, and this of course there's um, this is a battlefield that is open and it's free for everyone uh, yeah and so anyone who is able to do it and they can do it, and then this is something that is a, a great way for them to get involved. And Nyambagi uh, Talib, or for anyone who is wanting to help the cause of uh, Allah to to learn what they need to learn to defend the deen in this way. Like this cyber warfare is something that can be extremely effective. And uh, of course there should be people that are learning these, uh, learning these aspects to um, to support the deen and whatnot. Now, of course, there's a lot of areas of the um, of like jihad in general that people need to learn. Like you know, they need to have certain abilities to um, the the biggest problems that we've had in like jihad is anti-air. This is like if we look at all of the the wars that have recently happened with um, like the West, anti-air has been like one of the biggest things that we don't have all of the the anti-air missiles or defense that we would need to defend ourselves against these people um and of course like in afghanistan the anti-air wasn't it, it was actually kind of hard because there's so many mountains for them to use like the airfare like the air warfare from um from above this is where like the the west has like destroyed a lot of the muslim nations is just from dropping bombs and from air warfare um and not necessarily from their actual 
troops on the ground. But um, if we had anti-air warfare and also people that can make drones and all these other things, this is something that must be done, you know, for the for the sake of Allah. And and this is of the things that exposes when there's a weakness in this, it exposes the, the rest of the Muslim nations to exploitation and all kinds of these things. So somebody needs to stand up with, um, with their skill set, whether it's going into like uh, mechanics, and looking into mechanics and whatnot, and they can be a huge benefit um, to the uh, to the to the cause of Islam and of um, and, and of defending the Muslims by learning these certain skills, such as like chemistry and um, of these other other skills, um, such as also computer warfare, as I, as I mentioned there. Um, and so the next thing that he mentions here, is he says, "What thought al kital," and so that the person has the ability to go to fight. And of course, back in the day, uh, fighting is with the body. So the the person has to go from there, where they're, wherever they're at, and go somewhere else. And so the this would this would encompass that they're able to travel physically, able to travel and go to war and physically fight in this way, as well as would and and travel uh, or it in, uh, entail the travel expenses for them to do this. So um, they're going to have to have the money for them to travel and also for their family to be cared for while they're traveling um, for this. So this is if they didn't have the money to do this, then in this case, they would they would be let off the, the hook of it becoming obligatory on them. And this was the same like when you look at the thing, all the things that would that would make someone not able to go do Hajj, like if they didn't have the ability to go do Hajj, this is the same thing that would stop them from making um, or like the things that would stop the obligation of Hajj from their inability are the same things that would stop their inability to go to Jihad in general, uh, with the exception of like fearing this, uh, fearing the road, because of course Jihad is um, something that of course you're going to fear the road. Like you're going to fear for there to be danger on the road, as opposed to Hajj, you don't have to go if there's danger on the road. Um, so that's the only difference. But in general, all the things that uh, we talk about for Hajj and what is uh, the what makes it obligatory. From that, we would take this and put it over here, and you'd say yes. Everything that was um, that was a, a condition for it to be obligatory, um, and, and Hajj is the same thing that it is in jihad. So the next thing um, that he goes into, as he said, one man asira min al kufari for al darbin, and so then he talks about the the ones who are taken captive from the kufar. And there's two types. And um, this goes to um, like he's going to talk about like the the prisoners of war and when when there are people that are taken, what happens after that? So this is what this next chapter talks about. And just a, a prelude to this, in general, in the actual warfare, the warfare can never be done with something that is um, a massive destructive uh, thing. So like there can never be like. Uh, warfare of mass destruction like a huge like anything that's like nuclear and whatnot this is uh impermissible or something that's going to kill everything in in a in a vicinity never nothing can be like that big uh, um, that can be used and also when it comes to um, civilians and whatnot when it comes to non-combatants um, and women and children are specifically um and talked about that it's not permissible the prophet وسلم, he said it's impermissible to um that they're not to be fought. Women and children are not to be fought and not to be killed uh, and whatnot. And also the same is for like old old people, men and whatnot. Uh, so like old people, men or people that are like, uh, they have no business in war. Like they have nothing to do with war. Like we would say civilians in this day and age. Uh, but these people that have no business in war and they're not doing something in that, in this case, um, they would not be fought directly. Um, and of course, if there is war that's going on and they are somewhere around what happens, like of course, like bombs and whatnot um, are, are discussed in the books of, of Fiqh, they talk about catapults, and the catapults are big things that they would throw into a city that has people in it. Um, but is, if someone sees sees any of these people, such as like women, children, or like um, workers that have no, they have no business in war and whatnot, in this case, they're never to be um, particularly targeted and in and, and warfare. These people are supposed to be, um, are supposed to be safe from like actually having war pointed at them in particular. And of course, the point of, of jihad is not to kill. The point of jihad is to, is to spread the deen of Islam to the people it's of dawah, like essentially it's dawah. So like the people that are doing this, the goal is that the, the world comes to Islam. Uh, and so of course, which should not be done in a, in a, in a way that is ultimately going to destroy, like uh, destroy like the, uh, the, the people in such a way that there's nothing left, you know, um, from Lama's time.
So the, the next thing he mentions here, he says, وَمَنْ أَسِرَ مِنَ الْكُفَارِ فَعَلَى الدَّرْبَيْنِ So there's two types of people that are taken captive from the kufar. The first one, which is why I kind of mentioned here, which is, بَرْبُنْ uh, يَكُونُ رَقِيقًا بِنَفْسِ السَّبِي And so in the first type is one that would become a slave just by being captured. And what he means by Raqiqan is that, yes, the, the slaves, and this is the only way that slaves really come into existence in Islam, is by jihad itself. Um, so once they're taken into, uh, once they're taken into cap, um, he says the first type is ones that become, they become slaves just by being captured. And he says, So the, the young boys that aren't fighting, um, like children, and one that they haven't reached the age of um, Buru, and, and then the Nisa, and then women, uh, and this women of all ages, um, he says, so these would be, they would immediately be taken as, uh, like, they would be slaves and whatnot. Of course, in this day and age, like, calling it this way and doing, it, uh, like, having it open in this way, unless we have the strength to prevent ourselves from the repercussions of the, the world, in this way, it's like, um, a lot of times they would say that we don't necessarily take any slaves in warfare. And of course, this is a um, this is an issue that comes back to the fact that we're very weak. And if the and if this was seen in the in the light of the rest of the world, they would probably gang up on the Muslims, you know. And they would do they would, they would probably it would probably be something that would bring them together against the Muslims, which is not good. Muladzala um, But this is like in general, like their their hukum would be once they're taken as captives of war, then they would be um, they would be technically. Um, slaves in that case, and then the next one, which is Wudarbun la yarku bi nafsi sabi wa humur rijal ul baligun, and so he says. And then the other type is the ones that would um, that would not necessarily become. They would not necessarily sabi, which is like uh, become slaves. They would not necessarily become um, um, slaves um, just by catching them and by um, capturing them and whatnot. But and these are the men that are that are barigun, like Arrijal Barigun, these are the ones that are that are the grown men, um, and that have reached the age of um, accountability and whatnot. And, and of course how do we know that they reach the age of accountability? This this goes back to whether or not they have pubic hair. Um, and this is uh, like when it comes to the kufar, this is like the way that we would tell not necessarily you know, uh, it's not necessarily an age um, per se, unless they're like fifteen years old, um, of course, Hijri. Um, <clears throat> and so then he also says here, well, imam uh, fihim arba And then the imam between these people, like the men, he has four. He has four things he can choose to do with them, and he he's open to choose and see whatever he thinks is the best thing to do with them. Then he has these. One, he says, anqatab, like that they can be put to death. And this is one of the things, uh, one of his options, riqab. And so, like this is um, to to kill them. And and then the other one, oh, he says here, walistid uh, walistid and that they could be taken into slavery. So like they could either be put to death or taken into slavery. Or the other one, well menu. And this is um, be let off, um, be let off and uh, allowed to go. And and then the other one, which is well fidya biman al birrijal. And so, or the other one, which is to do fidya, which is to um, release them for a price. And so, like, to have a ransom for this. And this can be either a price with money that he takes from, from like, the kufar and whatnot for their, for their release, or with other Muslims, uh, like, that he could do a prisoner exchange. And, of course, in this day and age, this is the one that almost always we go to. Uh, like, um, this, this last one, which is the fidya, especially, like, this is what Palestine, um, in Palestine, they almost always go and they use this one. Or they, they, take, they take the prisoners and then they do a swap because there's so many Philistine um, prisoners that are in the Israeli um, prisons. So the fidya is, like, the most, um, is like the most feasible and best thing for them to do. Um, and, of course, if there is ever a Muslim, that is in prison from the kufar is upon the Muslims to get them out. This is a, this is an obligation, you know, for like the Muslims to never leave another Muslim in the the jails of the kufar. They have to get them out, even if it's just one. Uh, and it's sad to see the state of um, the world this day and age. And so the next thing that he mentions, he says, "Yafalu min ma fihi al so he looks at from these four options that he has. He does whatever he wants within these four options with what is in the best interest of, um, which is within the best interest of the people, like of the Muslims. Um, so the imam will look and see what is of these, what's the best um, thing for this to be done. Um, and he mentions, 
أحرز ماله ودمه وصغار أولاده. So maybe there's like the kufar that are going to war, and all of a sudden they say, no, I want to become a Muslim. And before they're taken into captivity, they say, I'm Muslim. And they do this before they get taken physically. They, they, they say the shahadatain. Maybe they're coming up to them, but they say the shahadatain before they're taken into captive. Um, we're taking the, um, uh, taken into custody and whatnot. In this case, then he protected himself. He says, ahraza, which means he protected. Uh, manahu, like his, um, his possessions. And what demahu? And also his blood, like he's not going to be killed. And also, and also his kids, like his young kids. Um, as opposed to like the older kids, if they were also bad like, and fighting, that doesn't necessarily protect them. Um, but his young kids, that he would, uh, that would be um, protected by him becoming a Muslim. And also, this, this, a lot of these things would come back to what is the maslaha in this, in this issue. We look at what is, what is the thing that is going to give the Muslims the, the best thing in this. Um, and also, he says here, وَيُحْكَمُ لِسَّبِي بِالْإِسْلَامِ عِنْدَ وُجُودِ ثَلَاثَةِ أَسْبَابِ So now he's going to talk about when do you say that a kid is Muslim. And this is, a, this is a little bit of a different subject that he brings up here, but it's at the end of this. And so he says, um, when, it, when it comes to when do you say that a, uh, that a kid or like a kid is going to be Muslim, the first one is, أَيُسْلِمُ أَحَدُ أَبُوَيْهِ so if one of his if one of his parents become Muslim, then the kids that are under him, it doesn't matter, mother, father, any of them became Muslim, the kids under them are automatically Muslim from that time on. And so and then also he says, yes biahu Muslimun Munfaridan an So if a if a Muslim uh, like say in in in, uh, in the battlefield or whatever, they find the kid and he's away from any of his parents. His parents aren't there, and he doesn't have parents that are, are that are known. In this case, if he becomes um, if he becomes like taken into slavery at this point, he would become a Muslim at this point when he's taken into custody of them, um, because he'd be under the the Muslims and he would follow the Muslims and what they do and they would raise him. Um, or he says here, "Aw yujar laqitan fi daril Islam." Or if he's found as a, a laqit, which is like an orphan or someone that you, you, we found the kid. We don't know uh, what's up. And this is like outside of warfare and whatnot. This is just in general. If we find a kid that doesn't have parents or family or anything, we don't know what's up with this kid. In this case, he would automatically, if he's in the, the place of, if he's in, a, uh, if he's in a land that has Muslims in it, then he would automatically be considered Muslim. And these are the three ways that the kid would be considered Muslim. So I say that one. One of his parents are Muslim, or uh, or two that he would be taken captive by Muslims without having any parents um, there. That because if his parents were kufar, then he would follow and he would follow his parents as the kufar. If one of them became Muslim, he would follow them as a Muslim. Um, but if any, but if both of his parents were the kufar, say they're um, say they're Christian or Wathani or something of this sort, then he would follow them in their deen. Um, and it's, of course we're not we're not saying that that's okay for him, but this is like the ruling of it would follow that way. Um, Yujid, or the third one, which is that he's found, he's found as like a, a kid by, by himself, or like an orphan, or just by himself in general, uh, Islam. so if he's found in a place that there is a single Muslim, like he says Darul Islam, and this would, this would have the intention that we would think um, that if he was in a place that is Darul Kufur, then he would necessarily be a Kafir, no, this, uh, the Mafum Muqarifa is not meant here, if there's a Muslim, that it's possible that he's from them, or there's just a Muslim around there, we say that he's a Muslim when, we, uh, when he would be taken into custody. He'd be taken in custody. If there's a possibility that he's a Muslim, he's a Muslim uh, in that case. Unless he was in, if he was taken in, a, or like he was found in a place where there's no one except Kufar, in this case, that he, he would follow them in them. Um, and also just a, another note about a, about a child in his Islam. A, a child, if they become Muslim, like if they say, if they, with the, the Shafi's will say, Yasifu, uh, Yasifu nafsahu bil Islam. Like that, this child says, I'm a Muslim. He says, I'm a Muslim. First off, a child's uh, word and testimony. Like if we have a child's testimony in, in court, we can't take his word as binding. This is in general, like we don't take the child's word as binding. So the Shafi view, when the child describes himself as Muslim, is that from this point, we, we treat them as if they are Muslim, but at the same time, we can't necessarily like uh, we can't necessarily 
give them all the rulings of Islam because yes, they describe that they are Muslim. And yes, we're going to teach them all the things that they need to know as Islam, but we can't necessarily use this to, um, we can't necessarily use this if they had like, say they had like um, Christian parents. We can't use this to say the Christian parents are no longer allowed to have custody of them. We're going to take them away. No, they they would still like if they were them me, then we would, we would we would say okay you're still with them but you have to give us the right to teach this kid Islam and to teach him how to be how to be Muslim and whatnot and then when he becomes older then it would be like okay his, his he's a he's a Muslim once he becomes of age we'd say yes we take his word that he's a Muslim um, but the difference in this would come is if he was like the uh, the Shafi view is that he's not necessarily a Muslim when he's young. Like, so, like, he doesn't take the ruling of Muslim. So then if he were to change his religion while he was still young, we wouldn't say that he's a Murtad either. We would say that he's still a, a Kafir Asli. So he wouldn't get the Had that a Murtad would get if they change the religion. As opposed to, um, so this is, that's where that, uh, kind of where the difference would come up. And, there, and there's some other minor differences that come up. But if the kid said he was Muslim, and then all of a sudden he's, he, like when he's seven years old, he said, I'm, I'm a Muslim, I want to be a Muslim. All right, great, we teach him Salah and everything. And all of a sudden he changes his religion. Is he now subjected to the Had of, um, of Ridda? No, he's not subjected to the Had of Ridda. He still stays as he originally was. You know, and that's the ruling because he didn't necessarily come. But if he became Badic, and then after that he wanted to go back, of course, then he would be subjected to that. Uh, and so there's a there's there's a, a bit of a difference there. And of course, um, here we talked about uh, some of the things uh, of jihad, and also we talked about uh, also of uh, uh, when there would be uh, when we have jihad, then there would also be. The, the people that are taken and what would be done with them. And the next thing he's talking about is he's going to talk about a celeb. And, and celeb is a, is a particular masala that comes up where it's a prize for the person who, um, who, who like fights and wins against another, uh, another kafir. Uh, or he, he kills the kafir, then he can have the things that are on him. Like his, his like personal belongings around him, like his, his clothes and whatnot. Uh, and one of these. And this is a thing that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he he said that whoever fights, um, whoever fights them, they will be able to get their salva. And so he mentions here, women katila. Uh, he says pasun, uh, rahimahullah. Uh, Abu Sujai says pasun. Women katila katilan or atiya salabahu. And so, like whoever kills, uh, uh, kills like one of the people on the battlefield. Of course, this is the this is someone who is uh, is mutabadra, and like this is not a, a paid person in, in an army that is paid. But rather someone who is not paid, but he's a he's someone that's um, volunteering to go out to war and whatnot. In this case, if he um, and he's not a paid mercenary, he's not like a paid mercenary or someone who's paid with a with a like as we a lot of times when people they go into the army, they're paid as being in the army. And this person doesn't necessarily have the same um, things here, but someone who goes out volunteers and goes into the army and he fights someone and kills them, then he's allowed to get his salaba, and so. And this is like he can get his, um, so like this guy that he killed, he has a gun on him. He also has a bunch of ammo and he has a cool knife and he has his, um, like the, his, and his outfit and like his um, stuff there. And in the money that's on him, he can take all of this. This is all for the person who killed him. That's his price. His price is he gets what's on him. And so this is a way, this is a way of like um, uh, encouragement for for someone to um, to work harder when they're in jihad is that they could get that person like if they they kill this person they can get his gun and this this is great you know or they get his um the, like his personal weapons or his personal belongings that are on him and so the next thing he mentions also um he says oh, I took someone of anima and and a and so the the vanima is the war is like the the loot uh you know the 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 and this is something that's not just those personal belongings on like a person that was killed like the personal belongings um that are like his like what he's wearing and whatnot this is one thing but like the actual equipment you know like all the other things or like the general um the general wealth this is something that's called the vanima which is taken from like the the war bounty and whatnot and this is broken apart on five different um this is broken into five pieces um, and the five different pieces that are that are broken in, he says for the first one, he says Fayota Arbatu Ahmes Iha Dimen Shahid al Waka. And so you give uh, five or uh, four fifths of the the Vanima is for the the people who were there in the, the battle. So the people that were in the battlefield, when they get this uh, when they get this war loot and this booty, then they uh, they get four fifths of it. 
it gets broken into five, and they get four fifths. And then the fifth fifth, what what happens in here? He's uh, or he meant he's gonna talk about the fifth fifth after this. But he says, "We yot done in Faris, thalath al lil Faris, and thalath to ashumin lil rajin sahmun." And so he says, for the Faris, then he would get three times the amount of a rajin. And a rajin is someone who's an infantryman. So the Faris is someone who has the horse. And of course, a horse, when someone comes into warfare with a horse, a horse is, uh, like, typically, it's always had much more benefit, you know, to a warfare because they can get around a lot faster. And also, like, this is of the things that makes a huge difference in a battlefield. So they get three, they get three, um, like, shares. The second is a share. So the, they, the person with the horse, he gets one for himself. And he gets two for his horse, so he gets three. And then for the person who's just infantryman, he doesn't have a horse that he brought into it, then he gets just one he gets one um, share. And so this is an encouragement also for someone to bring their horse to the field um, so that they can have um, that on the battlefield. As far as um, making PS on this with motorcycles, I'm not for sure. Um, but uh, let's see. And so the next thing he mentions, he says, Would I use him? Uh, as far as the people that are, are liable to get this this portion of the ghanima, what are their conditions? And he says the first of the conditions is that they're uh, al-Islam. This is the first. He says five conditions. The first of it, al-Islam, that this person is Muslim. Um, so if he's not Muslim, then he doesn't, um, this is something else. Maybe him and the imam can have a deal. Like if he's a mercenary and just wants to get some, some goods from it, maybe him and the imam can get him a deal for something and he can work that out with, uh, with the imam, but he doesn't take from this. Um, so this, these four, like the, the way it's broken up, the four fifths, um, go to, um, go to the people that, that are actually here. And these people that get a saham or like a portion or a share of this, the ghanima, they need to be one Muslim, two, well, well, bulu. This is the other one that they have to be valid, and then three that they're aqal, that they that they're sane, and because of course, someone if they're insane or if they lost their sanity, then they're not going to take money. Um, they're not liable to hold uh, wealth, but rather this would if they are eligible for it, then they would be given to someone that is their wali. Um, and then the fourth one, which is hurriya, because of course the the abd the um, like uh, a slave, he doesn't own anything. And what the kuru, what the and also that the person is male. And he says, So if they were if they're missing something from these conditions here, then they would get a portion, but not a full portion. They would not get a full portion. They would rather get just a, a smaller portion and according to what the Imam saw uh, for them. But they would not get the uh, they would get some type of reward. But they wouldn't necessarily get a full a full reward that is like a, a one single portion. And then the next thing he says, we yuk semul kumus ala thamsati asmun. And he says, sahmun li rasulillah. And so like that that one, so we had five fifths. That one fifth that was left over from the four fifths went to the people. The five, the fifth fifth um, goes. Um, this gets broken into five as well. One of them. Uh, and so this this is one one fifth that is for the Prophet and after him what do we do he says and this is something that after the Prophet his portion would be put to the the good of the Muslims uh, and as the imam whatever the imam sees fit and then he says and and also there'd be a sahm for uh, the will qurba and then he says who are these people wahum banu hashim wa banu banu muttalib and so banu and hashim and banu muttalib they are in a, uh, they're not able they're not eligible for zakat these are these are the people that are not eligible for zakat and so and like in in response to this we'll find them over here that they also get one fifth of this last fifth that is um, set aside. So anyone that is uh, that is Hashimi or Muttalibi, then he would be eligible for this and he would get this um, just for being Hashimi or Muttalib. Um, and also a second, and then one fifth of this fifth would go also to the Yatama for any of the uh, for any of the orphans would go to them. And one of these, one of the portions of the fifth uh, would also go with Sahmun Lil Masakin. And part of it would go to the poor and then there would also be a sahm li abna sabil. And so also a portion of this would go to the people to get them back um, home if they're if they're on the road and they were far away from home and they needed money to get back to their um, to their place of abode. And so this is the last last bit. So we have five fifths. 
four of these fifths, they go to the the, the people on the war field, like on the battlefield. And then this last fifth gets broken into five. And that gets broken into uh, one for the Prophet ﷺ, which now after his death goes to the good of the Muslims. And then of one of them, then the other one of these, the five, and the fifth of a fifth, the other fifth of the fifth, um, goes to um, Banu Hashim or Banu Muttalib. So like to these people, it gets split up between them. Uh, and for these, uh, and then there's also another one, which would be between the Yatima uh, the, and the, the Yatama, which is the, the orphans, and then also the poor people, and then the people that are Abna Sabil. Uh, and so this is how it would be broke up for, for these people. And, um, and this, is for, this is for the Vanima. And the last thing, and we'll, and we'll finish it off here, inshallah. There's still, there's still a bit more, but I think we'll, we'll call it for today uh, here, and we'll, we'll finish up the next uh, section uh, in another day, inshallah. Any questions uh, for today before we call it? Sure. Yeah. Uh, the the, the job of, of Jad or on mm. these people, these heaven people, um, what if a person falls in the category of these people and they still want to fight? What's the the, or the the ruling pertaining to it? If they felt, like, um, yeah. if they weren't of the people that are obligated to fight, maybe, maybe they they maybe they they not get bukala or they they not get bukali, and they still want to fight. So if they're if they're not um, Balik, this is one thing, you know, like if they're going to be put in dangerous way, then they, they can't be put in dangerous way. If they want to pr participate in a way that's not dangerous, okay, that's fine. Uh, and participating is fine. But this is for the obligation. So the obligation is, wouldn't be for them. But if they are going to put themselves in dangerous way, then no. Like um, if, they're, if they haven't come to Baloo, that's particularly Baloo. Or if they're a woman and they want to they wanna contribute, then this is a way, of course, in a way that's um, suitable for them. There's no problem. And for the other things, if they are able to contribute in a way, then that's great. Um, but this is mostly talking about when it would be obligatory if the imam said um, to everyone, he says, let's go out to um, to jihad. And he tells the people to go out to jihad at, at Talab. Uh, at this point, when he tells them to go out there, if they didn't have these conditions, they would not be held, um, they would not be held accountable to go out there with him. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت واستغفرك وأتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته